Sorry. Greg, let's start recording. Greg leaves. <laughs> Greg has returned. <laughs> he can hear us. Yes. Welcome back to the Backwards Hat Club, me and Brett edition. Greg is Greg is the odd man out now. <laughs> I'm looking for my hat, but I don't know. What it is. <laughs> His hair's pulled back, so it almost looks like it's heads backwards. Yeah, no, it, your hair grows very va- very fast. Yeah, it does. That, that's I, uh, amazing. I don't like it. <laughs> <laughs> I wish mine was like that. No, but no, these if you don't remember them because we've had way too much fun on this channel way too many times. They're in APOC and they just released their brand new creation EP today called Scryer, I think. The Scryer. The oh, Scryer. The one and only. The one and only. And we are here to talk about it, catch up, have some fun, and basically try not to get banned off of YouTube. That's the goal. It's always a good goal. Exactly. <laughs> We've gone from a couch to a wall to now over the internet. <laughs> <laughs> We're doing it all, man. The years of yeah. uh, developing. <laughs> yeah. Yes. The, I'll the have us in the studio soon, though. Oh, of course. You you oh, know you guys are more than welcome on the radio show. It's just currently it's based out of my house right now. Right. <laughs> so, I mean, I wouldn't care if you guys came over to record with us, but like we'll get there one day. Yes, one day. But no, let's dive right into it. The Scryer finally came out a year in the making. What's it like to finally have it released out there into the world? Less stressful because there was a lot of... This one probably was one of the more stressful ones, I would say, uh, compared to Awakening. Um, Just a bit more of everything's working right exactly when it needs to be done opposed to having it done beforehand but mm-hmm. getting it out is awesome people like it a lot which is awesome has more of a thrashy feel which we we're kind of going for but we're not trying to lose our old sound um yeah happy yeah yeah i'm relieved i uh some of some of these songs like uh devil twin the music to devil twin um, parts of Brainwashed and the lyrics to Brainwashed and um, the entire song of the Scryer minus the lead guitar was has been written for a long time. So it's to hear that stuff finally come to fruition feels really good to, to listen to it and listen back to it. Um, yeah, it's like Greg said, it's really nice to hear a good response from people. And it's uh, <laughs> definitely been more stressful. I'd say... The recording process for all of our albums hasn't hasn't really gone overly smooth because we kind of have a little bit of lineup hiccups every few years. Yeah, but uh, the the release process for this album has definitely been the least smooth, and it's been pretty stressful. So we're we're relieved to just get it out there. I want to reiterate that the album is shipping on or around August 24th. So anyone who sees this, your stuff isn't going to ship out until near the end of the month. That's It does say that on Bandcamp. And we thank you very much for the support and the patience. <laughs> yes, they do. And I found out the hard way yesterday when I finally made my pre-order, expecting that I would be shipping out yesterday. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> very to disappoint. But just with... And- uh, with everything, like I said, it hasn't really gone as smooth as in the past. And also, um, I think businesses, some businesses at least, are mm-hmm. a little bit slower due to COVID. Mm-hmm. Uh, and the economy is just picking back up. So for that reason, hopefully We're people working with it. be pretty forgiving about it all. Oh, yeah. No, that makes complete sense. So a little story time now. Now, as you both know, I have an eight-year-old brother named Grant who yes. is surprisingly into the music I like. And coming uh, up awesome. is his ninth birthday. And I said, okay, you can have whatever you want for your birthday. And after saying he wanted a German metal band t-shirt, I'm like, okay, let's keep it Canadian because of COVID. <laughs> <laughs> One of the first things he did ask for was an APOC t-shirt. 
Nice. So what's that like hearing a, a little kid wants your merchandise? It's pretty cool. I got a lot. It's humbling. I think, I think we've one or two other people have uh, got their, their little ones, our stuff. I'm trying to remember specifically who I know. Uh, I've had a, like a friend or an acquaintance bring their kid to a one show that, that was all ages years ago and they, they bought them stuff. So it's, it's really cool when, when uh, people are getting their, their kids or their little siblings into the music. It's very humbling. Mm -hmm. Yes. Now, the one song on this EP that very much surprised me was a song you debuted live last year at Starlight. I hope I'm getting the right song. Shrapnel Baptized? Yeah, that would that, be the one. We only yes. played that live once, and the lyrics weren't even complete at that time. I don't even yeah. remember if I did any of the lyrics. when we No, it live. was a full instrumental performance right. of it. I think I, I have a video. Hmm? I, I think someone videoed it. Someone has, yeah, yes. I think someone did. Uh, Chris from Battle Jacket. Oh, he did? Yeah. Oh, yeah, oh, yeah, yeah, okay. yeah. Battle Vest. Nice. Battle, oh, Battle Vest Productions. I was like, Battle Jacket, two stuffs, or? I, I get the, I I get the two that. confused. <laughs> like, Vest, Jacket, same difference. <laughs> yeah, that surprised you? Yeah, just because the song, just with the lyrics, it just, it sounded much better than the instrumental. Like, the instrumental alone was amazing. Mm -hmm. And, of course, I remember the the bass intro that Brett does, because how do you forget, yes, how do you forget a infamous Brett bass intro? But, no, um, what was it like to finally put the two together, the instrumental and the lyrics, and finally be able to create shrapnel baptized to be what it is now um it was very gratifying for me because i've been wanting to write a song of those lyrics for a long time i remembered i discussed during our interview last summer outside against the wall i discussed the topic and that and my intent for it didn't i yes you did. That? i think so yeah, yes yeah. euthanasia or no uh, child children workers yes exactly yes so it's, it's like about it's about like uh, child trafficking and children being put to war and stuff like that. And just like a topic that I've never really seen really sung about in metal. And uh, it's especially like, I'm not talking about the whole pedophile ring stuff that's really going on in the media, but it's still pretty relevant to like what's going on in today's society. So I don't know. I just thought I would attack something that's maybe would hit that would maybe shock people and hit a little bit closer to home for some people. Mm hmm. And I also yeah. tried to make a lot of the lyrics as understandable as possible, even though there's like some pretty heavy sections of the song where I'm clearly like trying to be brutal, but. Well, I thought, I thought when Brett showed me the lyrics, I thought it was cool because the perspective he took on it was definitely something I've never really thought of. And it, when he told me that and showed me it, I was pretty blown away at how it kind of flowed with the song. And then once he finally got to lay down the vocals for it, I even told you, I was like, dude, this is going to be like the heaviest song to date on our, like, uh, in our discography. <laughs> yeah. So he, I, like, he slayed it. Yes. Thank you. I think, like, in, in Awakening, is specifically on the songs Awakening Inception and on the song... Um, Serenity. Serenity, thank you. I do a, a lot of guttural vocals on those songs, which I, I might even not, not even go that low on this EP, but just the diversity of the different types of low screams and like stuff like that. that the I girth, did. like there's a lot of yeah. power behind it. Yeah. I was really trying to work on my power and my throatiness for, for this album. So I think it paid enough. <laughs> <laughs> Great, why are you laugh laughing? Throatiness. Oh, okay. Uh, we're laughing at the same thing. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> no, one of the, one of the more interesting things I found when you did announce the official day and re release of Brainwash Civilization was when you came out with your pre-orders, you had both a flag and a t-shirt for the album artwork itself and also, it's, and also a different set of flag and artwork for a Brainwash Civilization. So what kind of made you want to do that? 
Go um, for it, Brett. <laughs> well, we've we've always been kind of into doing more than one shirt for each release. Like, uh, I don't know if we did that right away with our first album, but then with with uh, Awakening, we did the Tabula Rasa shirt and the album cover shirt. So mm-hmm. we try to do like a single shirt and an album cover shirt, like whatever the main single for the album is going to be. And we decided a long time ago that a uh, brainwash was going to be the single because um, it was it was kind of like a, a almost ready for our awakening song. And um, yeah, I just I think I just I came across that art from an artist I had on Facebook, and I messaged the guys and said, like, "Hey, man, this totally looks like it would fit brainwashed." And just kind of went from there because we we already knew we were going to do a single shirt. So that that was the art that we decided to use for that shirt. And then as far as using it for a flag, I think we, we just threw the idea out there in case people would be down. I, I don't really remember I, how, we, how we discussed that. I personally, with merch, I like... I, I, I mean, I don't have nearly as many shirts as Brett. I've seen his closet. and He has like four different closets. Um, oh, yeah, two closets. But like I... I have enough shirts that I already have a hard time storing them. So I buying more shirts doesn't make sense to me because I'm not going to have anywhere to put them. So I really I'm like flags. To shirts as much too. <laughs> I like flags because you can just put them up anywhere, you know, like we have our jam all over the room. Um, just a different merch idea that, you know, for that reason, if someone doesn't have room for shirts because they have a million shirts already, you know, mm-hmm. you could still, you can still help the band by getting something else. Yeah. And even though the artwork for the brainwash thing isn't as colorful, we still thought that maybe some people would be down to have it as a flag anyways. So yeah. I think, I think it looks cool. Yeah, no, like for me, like just looking at it, it, it's more impactful for me when you look at the artwork for brainwash civilization. And I think that's really cool because it does have that kind of impact. Yeah. Like it looks like a, bunch of faceless people just walking yeah. brainwashed. Right? Yes. Uh, kind of like just troops just marching on. Yeah, mm-hmm. doing what they're told. Yeah, exactly. So I thought that was very much a smart decision, I guess, I'm trying oh, to say. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. You're welcome. Appreciate that. I'm, I'm glad that it came off like fairly, fairly how intended. <laughs> I mean, why else would you pick the artwork then? <laughs> Yeah, right. It, it, yeah, it's like there's other art we, we purchased. We've, we've, we've. Sorry, excuse <laughs> me. We have purchased one or two other sets of art that we're gonna use in the future. We just like I don't know. When you see a cool piece of art that fits your band, mm-hmm. just pick it up, right, and put it to use when it suit when its value yeah. is is needed or when it's relevant. There's nothing wrong with sitting on something that is gonna suit you. And Can you guys excuse me for one minute? Greg's going to have a big fart. Okay, Greg. I'll be right back. Yeah, no, like, I'm going to be honest with you. I'm kind of starting. I get that now, too, because I've been looking at artwork for down the line for merchandise. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, so I totally get now what you mean by that. Yeah. Yeah, but no, just... Is one of these artworks going to be used for a long sleeve? That's my biggest question. I need to know this. Um, we talked about... Oh, okay. So now that I'm thinking of it, we have we have one shirt design that's ready to print, that we can print any time that's actually relevant, and then one other design okay. that we purchased that's for the next album. Oh. So this, this other design, we'll probably try to do it... I think we discussed trying to do it as either a long sleeve or maybe a sweater but that's going to be like a pre-order only kind of thing and we're going to okay. do that in like i think we're going to do it in september and then have like cut it off in like have like a six or eight week pre-order time and then mm-hmm. it, or like ship the shirts early december kind of thing okay that's cool but uh so yeah we definitely want to do long sleeves what do you think we should do a pre-order for long sleeves and sweaters or just choose one and do it because we've only got one in one image to really work for it in that regard. I guess we could always get another image and do two, but that's a very good question. I don't know for you. What do you feel your fans would be more inclined I, to get? 
I know, I think people have spoken to me more about sweaters. Okay. And personally, I'm a pullover hoodie kind of guy, but like whatever the, whatever people are going to purchase. Uh, see this image, I wouldn't, the, the image we have is very like colorful and stuff. I wouldn't want to put a zipper through it. So if we were to do this particular image, it would have to be on the back. And then we do like the logo on the front in the chest or something. Yeah. And then if you they wanted do... to zip up or if we wanted to do a pullover, we could do the image and then like the lyric on the back and then like a print on the hood too or something. Oh, that'd be cool for a pullover. That would. So, there's options. Yeah. You got, you still have some time to think about it. Yeah. But when, no. uh, since, since we're going to be doing it as like a pre-order thing, maybe I'll send you a couple of the mock-ups to get your opinion, like as, as like okay. a friend and a friend and a fan's opinion. Yes. I would be down for that and cool. open to helping you guys figure that out. Yeah. It'd be like near the end of this month, probably. Okay. Sounds good. Cool. Sorry about that. Oh, it's all, it's all good, Greg. We were just talking about you. Yeah, uh, I, was, I was listening. No way. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Darn. No. Actually, but talking about merchandise, the one piece of merchandise I did find really cool that you guys did ha are having for pre-orders are shorts. Yeah. Yeah, finally. <laughs> I'm excited for those. Yeah. Now, what made you want to use the Tech Def logo of APOC instead of just a regular one for the shorts? I think I, I think it just looks cooler than to have on shorts. Just, mm -hmm. uh, well, actually, <clears throat> we were going to have an uh, emblem we were getting made to put on them, um, which we're still thinking about putting it in maybe, but we haven't really decided exactly yet, I guess. But we were going to put an emblem on in that logo, um, but so we decided to go with the logo instead. Okay. But, um, yeah, a lot of people have... Really, because we, we use that Tech to Death logo only in the Tabula Rasa shirt and on our hats, right? Mm -hmm. so, yes. Um, a, a lot of people really enjoyed that logo, and I can think of a few people specifically who said to me that they really wanted to see that logo on our next album. But I don't know. I think Greg and I just said it just feels right to just keep using the really sharp-looking logo, yeah. and then we can use that other logo on merch. Hey, if, if people mm -hmm. want to see that logo, they'll buy the merch, right? Like, <laughs> yeah. Uh, that's my, the guys. <laughs> yeah, no, my, it makes sense. My it's, thought um, to the logo too is like the tech death logo, we call it. Um, I mean, if you look at that, you're like, oh, these guys must be technical as hell, right? But I guess more so our thought to it is having the more plain logo is a bit more mystery to behind the band and like yeah. what they'll sound like. Instead yeah. of having just that mental thought, like, oh, they're going to be, like, technical. They're going to be, like, arch spy or something yeah, like this. Yeah, and then people might of. be disappointed if, when they hear that we're, like, just, just like, good at writing songs. Instead yeah, of I, mean, technical. <laughs> I mean, we're not, we're not as technical as those bands by any means. And, I mean, we're not trying to be. But having that, you know, false hope could definitely kill someone's interest in it. For sure. Of course. No, totally understandable. But speaking about the logo itself... And the spelling of the band name. What the hell is that like AE makeshift thing? I don't know what <laughs> it is. It's been pissing me off. <laughs> makeshift. I, I, I love try, that. If you ever want to put it in on your computer, hold Alt 1010 or Alt 101010. 10, 10. Really? Yeah, that's the code. Or Alt 0198. Like, I know all the codes because we got to put it in, right? <laughs> I know, because I'll be searching for you guys on something, and then it doesn't pop up. And then... that That's why Mark put all of our new YouTube videos with just A-E-P-O-C-H. Yeah, that helps. Yeah. <laughs> but no, when, I used, when I used to upload stuff, I used to at least tag it with both, but mm -hmm. I don't know. I get why it pisses people off, but... We've been we've been recommended that we change our thing on Facebook to being normal A E P O C H, but so it's easier for people to find. But our our our, uh, our search bar is APOC Metal, so if you type in APOC Metal, it'll come up. So mm -hmm. I don't know, but. 
I guess we're just fucking edgy. <laughs> edgy. <laughs> no, the, the reason it started is because when our original guitarist Chris thought of the name Epoch, there was already bands named Epoch, but no band named A-E-P-O-C-H. Huh. But I, I'd never really seen it. A-E-P-O-C-H. Are you okay? This little one. Oh, I got one of those in here. Yeah, sorry, Brett. Please carry on. I'd never really seen the word epoch spelt with an A, so we just added the Aether symbol instead. Just okay. Just to kind of make it more unique, but still be the word. Still pretty cool. I like it. It's basically just using a lot of artistic integrity on the word epoch. Mm-hmm. Perfect. No, I was just... Which is... Which is, as you'll notice, we've done on every single release we've done. There's Apocalypse, Karma Asphyxiation, Ozone Annihilation. I like to just make up words. <laughs> <laughs> and then there's the Scryer. That's a real word, actually. Really? It's just not a very known word. Scryer means, that's why I keep doing the crystal balls on all the posts. A Scryer oh. is a seer. Oh, okay. Or like, looks into, like, a cauldron or water or whatever. Yeah. Oh, now the album artwork makes more sense to me now. Yeah. yeah. Most, is... most people probably don't know what that word means. A lot of people I've, t- I've talked to about the title don't know what the word I means. didn't even know until Brett explained it. <laughs> <laughs> At least the people watching this video now know. Yeah. yeah. The artwork, though, the artwork turned out pretty much what we were hoping for we uh yeah we gave uh the artist uh justin the idea for it and he kind of took it to his own yeah we always give him a lot of freedom yeah and Mm -hmm. he made it exactly what we were kind of envisioning yeah no it's beautiful artwork how long was that artwork in the making (laughs) it was in the making for a little bit and we got it on the day of our first post yeah (laughs) yeah i remember that post (laughs) we were like i don't know i think it was what is it it's june 4th or something june June 5th 5th, i think we got the art art, like yeah like june june 3rd or something and then yeah we planned to have the post on june 5th we didn't get the artwork until the third so it was very very Oh, no, 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 that was it. My Sorry bad. about that. We planned to have the post on the 5th. We didn't get the art until later in the day on the 5th, so we changed it to oh, yeah. the 7th or the 8th that we made the post. Right. Yes. I remember that post. I remember talking to you about that and then seeing the post, and it was just like, oh. <laughs> yeah. Gotta wait a couple just days a now. Tease. Just a tease. <laughs> yes, why'd you but, have to do that to me, Brett? <laughs> well, we... We like to give people blue balls. <laughs> it's a test to see if people will actually still like our music after being pissed at us. Why were people <laughs> pissed at you? Because we make them wait. <laughs> <laughs> now, well, yeah, that, uh, that was a bit stressful regardless. Mm-hmm. But no, yeah. when it came to... I believe the song, the scry, the scryer itself, mm-hmm. it was already created. Like, yeah, like the music. Yeah, that song. Yeah, that song, the music and lyrics, besides the lead guitar and the drums, like Greg wrote the drums for every song on the album, but the, the um, the guitar solos, Ira wrote for that song, but the uh, the actual music. And lyrics was written when me and uh, my former bandmates, Ben and Ryan, uh, we were probably about 15. And we were, we were writing music that was influenced by uh, in Death, Dying Fetus, uh, yeah, In Flames, Necrophagist, Beneath the Massacre, uh, Death Clock. That was like stuff we were into back then. And we, were mm-hmm. to, we were trying to write like Dying and Fetus. And make it big. Massacre. Yeah, <laughs> and then it just we we could never find a drummer back then, 
and even plummet was written back then in in the old like with my old bandmates and uh same with city of statues a couple of our old songs mm -hmm. um so these are songs that after me and those guys just kind of like we were never able to do anything successful with that project the one guy went to school for classical guitar and he just like left the band and then as apoc was forming the other guy was still I was still jamming with him and he was going to do APOC, but he was getting into like more eighties rock and stuff at the time. Mm -hmm. So we just kind of naturally parted ways. And then those guys were just like, yeah, man, like I was involved in writing all the songs too. And then I, I wrote all the lyrics to them. Yeah. They, so I talked with the old bandmates and they're like, yeah, man, like just make sure those songs get heard. And I was like, well, I, I, that's exactly what I want is to just get them heard. So, yeah, they're couple, all credited couple, too. Yeah, every every yeah. song in the APOC discography that has anyone else's uh, work, at least in the CDs, and it should be in Bandcamp too, I think, in the credits for each song. Yeah, everyone's I, I think... credited. So, even though Ira isn't in the band anymore, he's credited in the new stuff. It, it says, it always <laughs> says who, who wrote each song. But... That's high. Yeah, exactly. She doesn't want me to ruin her birthday tomorrow, I guess. Oh. Mm. Yes, turning one. So I'm still a little shit. Eat. <laughs> I am this a one, little kitty. Uh, so annoying. This one acts like a dog. Yeah, ours, mine too. Literally, it's annoying. He yeah. attacks our other cat, trying to be playful, but it's like, just leave her alone. <laughs> You you just described this one too. We should have our cats get together and have yes. fun. We'll cat sit for one another. <laughs> Kitty play dates. No. <laughs> but no gentlemen. Um also I believe when you did write that post that there was there are more songs like Scryer who have been written in the past and will be coming up. And be yes. brought to life finally. Yes, to, to other extents. Like the only other songs that were ever written by me and those particular former bandmates are already recorded. So there was the ones I already mentioned, Plummet and City. And then um, Brainwashed has contributions from my former bandmate Ben, and so does Ozone. Mm -hmm. And then Devil Twin has, it was written by uh, my former bandmate Ryan and I. And then. Um, what was the other one? Scryer was written by all three of us. But, and then we uh, have a couple songs on the next album that we're planning that are contributions from our old guitarist Chris, I believe. Yes, exactly. Um, and th and that's Bobby, what that implication was, yeah. Uh, Bobby might have a couple riffs, I think, that were contributed, yeah. Yeah. A couple riffs. But we, but, all, all the music that's made with the band members at the time is, it's kind of like, an understanding that every it's all just for the band of a book right like it's mm -hmm. obviously it was written to do this it was written so that the band could get it out and we're always changing our sound especially as we've been going on and going through guitarists all the time yeah we're just starting to give i mean it took a little bit to work into it but eventually we're getting to the point of it's like okay well like here's the songs we have you know like work with that give us everything you got that you want to contribute and, you know, I'll throw that in. That's what's going to make the APOC sound. Yeah. It's going to be Brett and I with the new members, right? Pretty much. Yes. Okay, you stop. Just play with my notebook. There you go. And then hope the, the hope is that with, with Mark seeming to be in it for the long run, we can just continue to develop more of a concrete, trio sound yeah. Mm -hmm. and uh yeah there there is a there is a mystery fourth member to be announced <gasps> at some point you found the guitarist if you look yeah. on some posts you'll probably figure it out but yeah um yeah oh when might we so, be able to expect the announcement well, I, was well, talking... I, th I think we're planning on taking band photos next time we get together for a rehearsal so it'll be sometime in the next few weeks we'll yeah I was, I was talking to mark and him and the new guy last night i almost said his name <laughs> um, 
But I think Marcus talking to you, and I think we were going to announce it soonish. Okay. Yeah, like this month for sure. Like, yeah, I got a I got a really sick location that I want to take the next fan photos at. Um, like just outside of Cambridge, it's probably on the edge of Cambridge, and uh, yeah, we'll we'll just we'll get them up and get the announcement out there because the new member is going to be in the playthrough that we that we filmed for for a brainwash right. civilization. That's that's what oh. we're going to announce it actually. And when does that video come out? Um, I want to say sometime August, I think. I yeah, it, I think it's, it, uh, it, well, it's, oh yeah, it's not set in stone because it also has to do with, uh, our PR guys helping us like get some, uh, some proper PR for the playthrough. So mm -hmm. we're pretty but, much open to whenever he wants us to drop it. Yeah. But Marcus, the, our newest guy right now, he's. He's been a huge help for this EP. He's done a lot of work, yeah. so we're we're super happy. Obviously, it shows interest that he wants to be a part of the band because he's doing so much for it now. He contributes a lot. Yeah, yeah, he does. He, he does a lot for us, which we're super he, appreciative of. He's um, done everything visual for this album except for the the cover art. He put oh, he yeah. put the he did the the title uh, like he put the logo on and did the color and the effects on the logo. He did the entire CD layout. All the mock-ups for the pre-orders. Yeah, all the mock-ups and all the pictures. Um, it was okay. You, Greg or Mark, I think they worked on the Bandcamp layout together. And then uh, Mark is doing the editing for the videos, too. So yeah, huge. He's, he's pulling a lot of weight right now. Wow. I am looking forward to meeting or seeing, again, this new guy. Ask him about his hybrid. What? <laughs> Ask him about his hybrid. Yeah. Does he drive a Prius? Well, oh, no, he's not. Just ask. He's not, him about him. he's not a total pussy. <laughs> <laughs> well, when you guys re-return, return, 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 hopefully with Marcus and whoever this man is or woman. That'd be awesome. I don't, because I don't know. I love you, not assuming, but I will say it is. It is. A, it is a man. It is a man. Okay. Yes, it is a it is a guitarist who is extremely talented, who is somewhat known in the Ontario scene, but not super super known. We're lucky to have him aboard. Excellent. <laughs> now, was it because of the commercials we keep doing for you? <laughs> <laughs> no, I don't. I don't think so. But we're, we love. We love. Those. I don't. I don't. I don't remember if he said like that, that. What made him think of asking us? But well, no. What happened was we, we asked him if he was interested. Yeah, you tell yeah. the story, Greg. Well, but, I, I initially, I, I played with him in my other band, Stolos, and I was planning to ask him to to play with us and join, but I. I backed out. I was like, "All right, you're because you found out way he was too playing busy. in like several other bands." Yeah, right before I was gonna ask him that night, he starts telling me, "Oh yeah, I'm playing in this band, this band." I'm like, "All right, I'm not gonna ask. You're obviously too busy." And then Marcus, <laughs> our new guy, he's like, "Yo, guys, I uh, I I know this guy. He's a really sick guitarist. Let's ask him <laughs> to join." And I was like, "Well, this is what his situation is like. Let's just do it anyways." So Marcus asked asked him, and he's like, "Yeah, I'm now like fully on board." So it kind of worked out. It was kind of ironic like that. The new guy got the new guy. New guy got the new guy, yeah. He really yeah, didn't like, want to be called the new guy anymore, eh? No, he's like, <laughs> I'm over this phase. Yeah. <laughs> he's like, I'm contributing too much to be the new guy. <laughs> he's like, I want to be the lead guitarist, not the new guy. But yeah, we, we jammed with him a few times, and he learned some of the solo. Like, we have good, Do you know what Guitar Pro is? It's it's basically like a tablature oh, program. You oh, can okay. tab your music on it. So most of our music has tabs for it. So people, if anyone wants to learn it, you can just look at it and learn it. Like like a what's it called? Like a, like, like sheet music, but for sheet music. Guitars. Oh, okay. what's that, I, I what's that website? You're trying to stay, Greg. What's that website Ultimate called? Guitar. Ultimate Guitar. Um. So all all our stuffs like that. And 
some solos aren't tabbed on there because obviously people just play them to feel. Mm-hmm. But he learned all the solos that he had to learn by ear. By ear. And he learned a wow. solo that no one else. We had a guest solo, uh, Benjamin Ellis, on the EP uh, Apocalypse. And he learned that solo by ear, which none of our guitarists up to date have learned. So, yeah. really? really good. He's really good. Wow. And you've had a lot of guitarists. We have a lot. We've got a lot of talented guitarists too. Yeah. Yes, Kyle. Yeah. I Taylor. want to throw it out there that all of those guitarists are still our friends. Yeah. <laughs> it's all been situational departures. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Or like or like conflict of interest. Well, not com- conflict of. Uh, yeah, just lack of interest in our specific subgenre type. Yeah, of like Kyle wanted to focus more on Invicta. Mm-hmm. Um, Taylor wanted to focus more on Cathartic. Mm-hmm. Which good for them. I mean, those they're, those are they turning were, out awesome. Yeah, they were just starting out at the time, and uh, yeah, he was he was wanting to focus on that. Mm-hmm. Of course. And then Ira, and Ira, he even when he joined, he 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 enjoyed it, but it I feel like it was more him getting introduced into the scene down here. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, which he did. He, he knew he knew me for several years, <laughs> and. So I, Ira being in the band was cool. We're still friends with him too. Yep. And then he got into Raider, which he was a perfect fit for that. He definitely was. Uh, he's definitely more of a thrashy guy, which the EP mm-hmm. has that thrashy sound to it, which I would say is huge impact of him, which is awesome. Um, so him joining Raider, I think he's like a perfect fit for them. Like yeah, exactly. What he wants to play style, old school thrash, death metal. So. I mean, they especially have, they have because, a lineup now. Yeah, they have a really solid lineup. <laughs> and especially because when we were on tour and Gabe filled in on the other guitar spot for us, yeah, Ira, Ira and Gabe really clicked, like, chemistry instrument-wise, and they really became good friends on that tour, too. Mm-hmm. So it's, uh, it's just something that it fits. So, yeah. So now, everything's... Everything seems to be going better for everyone now. Like mm-hmm. ever since everyone's going to do what they really want to do, everything works out. I mean, they get to do what they like. We found two guys who I feel they are. They haven't. I haven't had more of a fitting guitar guitar players for the band. Mm-hmm. I think the two new guys we have are probably the best fit we've had, just stylistically and compared to kind of what I'd like to see. Mm-hmm. So how did Marcus kind of get thrown into the mix of APOC? Um, well, so going back a few years from before he joined, he actually, when Kyle and Taylor left, Marcus messaged me and he was saying, hey man, sorry to hear that, but uh, you know, I'm loving the music. I'm sure you're going to find people and I'm sure you know, stuff, stuff's going to happen still, right? Mm-hmm. And I, even then, I felt like just asking him, be like, "Hey, I really like your style," because he played a Raider before. I was like, "Hey, man, like, do you just want to try out?" But I didn't. I, I took it out like I always do, asking people. Um, yeah, because he would play with Raider and wear like obscure shirts and do like he would have like two <laughs> solos in their set, and his solos would be filled with like tapping sweeps and stuff. And we're like, <laughs> "Dude, this guy's exactly what we want. He wears the band <laughs> oh. shirts we listen to." Him. Yeah. <laughs> So um, essentially, you and Raider traded guitarists. Yeah, it seems like More it, right? Less, yeah. Um, but yeah. Less, that's what happened. Fast yeah. forward a year or two or whatever it was. Um, I forget how... I don't know if he asked us or we asked him to try out. I, 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 think, really he, I think he knew we were still looking <clears throat> and, and, he asked, and he asked to jam. And then uh, I just knew that he, he was probably going to be a good fit. And I was like, hell yeah, let's yeah. jam. And he showed interest right away. And now he's basically running the band. Yeah. <laughs> well, I wouldn't say running the band, but like for, for so long, yeah. it's been just Greg and I. And we're mm-hmm. so having all that weight that it, it is like, it, it's almost weird how like insanely nice um, it is for. Uh, to have a guitarist who's contributing as much as him. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Of course. Now, he did the the riffs and the solos, I believe, for... I forget the song title. It starts with an O. I always Ozone to, Annihilation. Ozone Annihilation. That is the actual song title. 
Ozone, ozone annihilation. Uh, is it annihilation or annihilation? Annihilation. I don't. Brett? Uh, I would pronounce it. Oh, sorry. My brother just texted me. He's, <laughs> Look at that frozen I just, of Brett. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> sorry, dude. I, uh, I, it's okay. Um, uh, the, I would pronounce it ozone annihilation, but ozone that's just, again, okay. me using me using my like artistic integrity but yeah for anyone who wants to pronounce it like the band we pronounce it ozonilation ozonilation definitely when it got released it was very much a holy crap what am i listening to by Thank you. You're, it was really good and different compared to your effort hi cat very different from a lot of the other stuff i've heard you guys do from the demo to apocalypse to time <laughs> no awakening mm -hmm. jesus to now the squire it just that song just stands out on its own what was that kind of like in the creation process of making that song a it's reality like a 10 year old song and then we just revamped it yeah like a lot of the parts in that song are pretty old too like uh yeah, Ben and I wrote most of that song, and then there are certain parts that uh, I forgot, uh, like several several riffs in the song I forgot, and then I rewrote and added and rearranged riffs, and and then I, I think Greg might have helped me with part of the arrangements too, and then uh, when Mark really became, excuse me, serious about being in the band he started wanting to contribute to that, that song. So we let him help with the final little touches on it. And, uh, yeah, it's ozone is, although I don't know. I, I love that song, but I just, I'm glad it's being received as well as it is. I'm kind of surprised for some reason, I think because maybe <laughs> the, the vocals aren't super, super fast, but the riffs are pretty fast, but mm -hmm. I'm just happy people like that, that song. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I was a bit more surprised how well it was being received, too. I, I definitely thought Shrapnel Baptized would have been the biggest hit. Um, and then I, I personally thought Devil Twin Part 2 was going to be a huge hit. It's which, just because it's quick. and It's like, just like... Yeah. <laughs> super fast, intense, in your face. Yes. But no, Devil Twin Part 1 really just threw a curveball at me. Just like, oh... If, do you hear that? Yes. <laughs> um, um, did you did you enjoy Devil Twin Part One or did it? I did really you find did. it kind of annoying. No, I loved it. I thought it was different. It was a great way to open up the album. It's right definitely it's definitely a different route. I wasn't expecting for an opening of an APOC album, but it's really good. Thank nice. you. You're welcome. Yeah, so, we we we've never had anything acoustic on any of our albums. Sorry, I'm going inside. I'm oh, it's all good. Inside. Good decision. Um, <laughs> yeah, we've it never was... had anything acoustic, but uh, Ira wrote that entirely. Yeah, that song. We thought. I thought. Uh, we both thought. You know, like, why not? If this is going to be such an intense song, have something soothing, mellow. Uh, with some melody flow right into it and then just go boom kind of yeah. yeah but it's exactly what we were intending as well definitely caught people by surprise your yeah. acoustic um, thing but I think it's nice I uh, we're pretty diverse in music and you know I'm not opposed to adding even acoustic interludes or just sections oh, um, just to kind of change it up, throw people for a curveball. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, it just gives you so much more uh, directions you can take it from where it sounds, right? Exactly. You know, it, I thought the song title names, like Birth of a Demon and then Death of a Man, were fitting for both songs. It was brilliant. Just great Thank way you. to open it. And just the whole EP itself is phenomenal. I love it. Now I'm going to ask... Much. You're welcome. You are welcome. Now, for both of you, where do you think it will rank in the Thrasher's Paradise's infamous top ten albums of the year? Um, 
Well, well it's been if, released if so it far. Even is worthy of making the top ten. There's a lot of good albums. Yeah, there's a lot of good people, so I don't know. It's, it's, it's what you think of it, not us. I'll be honest with you. It's it's. I'm pissed off at the fact of how many good albums there are this year. There's a lot. A lot of good stuff. There is, and when you just dedicate it to just Canadian albums, it it gets worse because it's like I'm going, I'm seeing bands from over here <laughs> out in the west. Just how do you narrow it down? Well, let's see. I currently have, if I can find it, like a page full of albums. Oh nice. my god! And then another page full of albums, and that's and, only halfway into the year. And this is yeah, only halfway through through the year. And then like Cataclysm and Unleashed the Archers are still to release something later in the year. So it's just like, how does that impact the list? And it's just like yeah, ah. I uh, I always had a hard time doing albums of the year and stuff because I'm like I just can't decide like I listen to this as much as that and that as much as this and it's like yeah last few years it's been really hard for me <laughs> yes I and just gave up of course my big mouth had to add like two more categories this year <laughs> we added song of the year and then like I think it's album artwork of the year oh cool nice because I feel the artwork deserves some like recognition for sure. Recon yes. Recognition for the hard work the artist puts in. Yeah, it's mm -hmm. it's a lot of work for sure. Not as not people don't ever think about that a lot. No, they no, and I just feel like it's time for it for them to be recognized for their hard work. Personally, I've even, you know, when I kinda got into music and metal and everything, I I didn't even care much for like artwork and stuff. Um, but as I hung out with Brett more, he, he kept showing me cooler and cooler stuff. And I kind of got more of an appreciation for it and, you know, really how much time mm -hmm. the artist does put into it and what they're doing on it is just immaculate. Like It is. Like, that's why I kind of wanted to introduce those two because I feel everyone's just doing a song of the year, but album artwork of the year, I don't see like many other people doing it mm -hmm. and it's time for that because there's like yeah. deserves appreciation yes yeah, so like cathartic demise's album artwork from last year was stunning and beautiful mm -hmm. your yeah, artwork sure. is amazing raiders artwork is good <laughs> <laughs> i think raiders artwork fits them though they have that yeah, it does. thing which is pretty cool like that uh, War they're gonna type thing. To use, mm -hmm. They're going to continue to use that that dude who is the raider as their mascot, right? So, yeah. See, I even asked them straight up, "Does he have a name?" Oh, <clears throat> uh, and did they? What did they say? No. Uh, they should. That'd I be asked, kind of interesting. Yeah. I asked Angelo or Kev once, and I'm pretty sure he just said, "He's the raider, man. He's the, the guardian raider. of the fire." Yeah. We actually. Um, Brett and I always have joked about this, even this artwork. So if you look at the EP and then Awakening Inception, they both have like a spiral type thing to it. You know, the Apocalypse has the spiral into the black hole. Mm -hmm. Awakening has like the spiral in the stars. And that's what we were initially kind of going to do for this and kind of keep that the concept through our albums. Yeah. Um, it didn't hold up. But Brett noticed that if you look at it on... What, was it Bandcamp? Yeah. If you, look at the thumbnail, if you look at the thumbnails for all the albums on Bandcamp, it does kind of look like uh, the cauldron in the center of our album because it's on an angle. It almost yeah. kind of looks like it's a spiral. <laughs> to, just like the others. So. <laughs> it's, it's, it's our inside, not so inside little joke. <laughs> good. I think, I've never <laughs> noticed that. That's pretty genius, actually. It's like those hidden gems, right? That are, is it yes. spoke of, but it's more by ear mm -hmm. or word of mouth. No, how oh, that that really caught me off guard. <laughs> 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 but no, 
I still can't believe it's almost been a year since the redemption interview we did at the Starlight. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. That was and fun. It was, and now with the recent news of Starlight closing down, it kind of just like wow. That's yeah, a lot of uh, a lot of venues too, right? Yeah, maybe it's... maybe Boathouse might open up uh, to something again, but who knows really? Um, there's and there's something else that I, I can't really touch on because it's not set in stone, but there might be another venue starting to throw like metal shows, but I can't really say much about it, but fair enough, but well, fingers crossed. Here's hoping. Well, I don't know what that was, but here's hoping. <laughs> yes. That, that is the new metal symbol. Now it's <laughs> fingers crossed with that. <laughs> fingers crossed that there's metal. Yes. How to make it more satanic. Yeah. <laughs> this is a newer question to the channel that we've been asking a lot of musicians because we like to have fun here, as you both know, because we don't take ourselves seriously. Got to keep it personality, right? Yes, Brett gets it, but no. So last time you were on, we asked you who would win in a fight, Lemmy or God. Then we asked you who kind of fame and made this like famous in yeah. metal this time we have a completely different question that has nothing to do with metal kind of so what's one thing every metalhead loves metal what's another thing every metal loves? Music. Um, feeling feeling the wind from uh, when someone is from someone's hair when they're doing a windmill <laughs> That Especially smell. my hair, because it always that, smells really good. That L'Oreal, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> L'Oreal Paris. <laughs> yeah, man. Should, sponsor, should sponsor Immortal. <laughs> I, I was going to say beer, but I don't even drink beer. Yeah. Oh. Beer. Yeah, I was going to say beer, but I know some people don't drink beer. Yeah. So. Okay, alcohol. I like alcohol. That is something a lot of metalheads do like, besides a lot. metal. But not, <laughs> not all. Not all. Um, anyways, I'll get back to the question I was trying to ask. What's, what's, yeah. what's, the, what's the answer? <laughs> That's for you to decide. Uh. Oh. Well, then my answer was, uh, what did I say? Oh, yeah, that's that's my answer. I've never had someone not like that unless it, yeah. Everyone's always like, mm, it smells good. <laughs> okay. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> A lot nowadays, there seems to be like an influx of metal bands and distilleries or breweries partnering up to create a signature, either beer or rum. Slayer sure. teaming up with Jägermeister. Metallica has like a blackened something. Mm-hmm. I'm not sure. I wouldn't be surprised if Alestorm has a rum back in Scotland. Probably. Probably. If Now, if APOC ever got to this opportunity where they could have their name alongside with a alcoholic beverage. What kind of alcohol would you prefer it to be? And what, what might you want it to be called? I would personally, I would say like wine. I don't know what kind of wine, but because uh, Epoch is like a, a thing of time, we could just have the brand like Epoch wine or whatever. And yeah, it's finally, fine, finally, finally aged. aged over the Fox. Wow, that's really clever. <laughs> yeah, that's pro- that'd probably be the best, like marketing wise for us. Why didn't I know you were gonna say wine too? <laughs> I'm just thinking. I'm like, he's probably gonna say wet red wine. <laughs> <laughs> could be. I don't like red. Fair enough. But it's not about <laughs> what could, I like. We should. We should totally make like a food food brand. Like wine and like, like old cheese, epoch cheese. We'll just sell everything <laughs> aged. Yeah, when it was old, aged smoked meat, salted meats, some, some moldy bread. <laughs> epoch presents timed finally collection. <laughs> but finally aged foods. Finally aged foods. <laughs> Uh, available at a Freshco near you. Buy APOC for the e- APOC. <laughs> Jeez. 
I think that's it, though. Wine. Wow, well, okay. It makes sense. So is the name finally aged or finally yeah finally aged is that the that's gonna that be name? like that should be that's like our slogan. Our, our slogan yeah oh, okay what would the name of the wine then be depending on okay if it was red wine i don't know i don't know <laughs> it's got the thinking like, going call it like call it like like um what if we think of like historical time eras and like historical like historical epochs so like oh you'd call one like mount vesuvius uh, or call no like like call one like uh a lot of album references well that would be that'd be a good idea i was i was gonna say like call one like the sumerian Merlot, epoxy Merlot. That that actually sounds like a good wine name. Well, hit us up. <laughs> the finely aged Sumerian Merlot. By Apoc. Yeah, with a subtle voice. By Apoc. For Apoc. <laughs> <laughs> it's like the person who does like the diamond commercials. Just very subtle, mellow voice. Yes. <laughs> so then, I'm assuming there would be a wine test, wine tasting concert to go along with it. Yeah. And cheese. Uh, and cheese. And of course, we can't forget the cheese. Mm -hmm. Cheese. Cheese. So we would we would have to co coordinate that with like the release of like not not our next album, but maybe the album after that, <laughs> and then like the the concert would be performed at like. Uh, a legion or something like that or like someplace not overly fancy but like a big place and there'd be like a cheese and wine <laughs> cheese and wine tasting <laughs> thing as well as our fucking cd release <laughs> you have the merch table and then right beside it the, like, the wine cheese and wine table. <laughs> yeah <laughs> hey man would that then lead to apoc wine glasses yeah, we already we, we already know a guy who can who can make us beer like beer. Yeah, like glasses, beer tall glasses. Mm -hmm. Beer glasses. We were gonna do that, and then all of our fucking shows for the spring got canceled. Oh, damn it, Corona! God damn, God damn, damn it. it, world ending. And this is why we don't drink Corona beer. I know. God damn Coronas. Yes. Apparently, the coronavirus is now going to be called the Bud Light Vice Virus. <laughs> Remarketing it. Yes. <laughs> We're going to rebrand this, man. We're going under. Yeah. This thing's really killing us. What could we recall it? What could we recall ourselves? <laughs> I don't know. But no. But it's. I just got to say this, hearing the new album, it was really awesome. Just, it was really good. I can't, there's not enough compliments I could give you on the album. That does it justice. You. It's just, it was, I'm going to be honest with you up front. The album of the year was very difficult because I did, I never got that. Like I can see this being the album of the year feeling. But when I heard Scryer, I got that feeling. Nice. I'm, I'm not just doing this because, like, I'm interviewing you. I'm being honest with you as your friend. It's like... I appreciate that. You're welcome. Like, it gave me that feeling. It just was really solid from front to back. Sweet. Thank you. Thanks, man. You're welcome. Now, gentlemen, we're kind of at the end of the interview because I'm running out of questions to say. And I'm just sure. losing track because we keep laughing. <laughs> And this yeah. happens all the time. It's always a good time with us three. Yes. The 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 original Redemption 3. Yes. Without commercials this time. Yes. No, <laughs> no, no, one, no one need for advertisement. No one needs to 
back out of their parking spot, and we have to move to make that happen. <laughs> it's a nice, casual, kind of different, multi-locational interview. Nice as it should be. Yes. So, gentlemen, before I stop recording, is there anything else you'd like to say to the beautiful people watching this on YouTube? Thanks for the support. If you bought the album, thanks for checking it out. If you have, um, yeah, everyone who's put work into this is greatly appreciated. Yeah, exactly what Greg said. Uh, also, depending on when this interview airs, I uh, just wanted to like shout it out again that uh, the merch, or sorry, the digital album is still for sale for one dollar until august 14th or 15th so grab that while you can after that it'll be five dollars um so we don't want people thinking we're just yeah. changing the price just take advantage of this kind of cheap yeah. pre-order thing while you can it's only a buck a couple weeks thank you everyone very much for grabbing the album and uh yeah, I'm really happy that people seem to be enjoying a lot of the songs from it. Yeah. Well, no, thank you, gentlemen, for taking time out of your extremely busy release day plans to come on Thrasher's Paradise today to do this quick little hour-long interview. <laughs> nice for having us. Yeah, it's always nice chatting with you, Colin. Yeah, it's, nice it's always us on the channel. You're welcome. It's always great talking to you guys too. You guys know you're both welcome on whenever you want. Just shoot me a message, and we'll. Get it planned ASAP. Thanks, man. Sounds good. You're welcome. And until next time, people watching this on YouTube, because where else am I going to air this video? The Hub. <laughs> <laughs> Damn it, Greg. <laughs> until next the part time. where I strip. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's, that's, for the, that's for the behind the scenes. Okay. Oh. <laughs> That's for the patrons. <laughs> yeah, the Patreons. <laughs> Until next time, everyone, keep on thrashing. <laughs>